Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel LSE Tutorials by Sheldon. And it's been quite a while since I uploaded the video last time, and hopefully, this time I can bring you guys something interesting and useful. And today, we're going to talk about blurring an image in LS. I think it's quite simple that you, you know, if guys Google a little bit, you can easily find the answer. But I still want to go through. Uh, quite a couple options as well. Give you guys some theory about uh, how iOS itself is doing the math for us. Um, and I also want to explain the basic or the fundamental of image processing a little bit. So, yeah, like I said, if, uh, if you guys do a little bit research on Google, you can easily find multiple solutions. But when I, when I was researching this kind of problems, I always prefer to go through Apple's document. I'm going to use this article to explain uh, the foundation of the image processing. So basically, when you, when we come to the idea that we want to blur an image, every single pixel of the image is actually a data. In iOS world, it's called NS data, and it's as simple as the RGBA, the four different data points. So R stands for red, G stands for green, um, B stands for blue. And then if, if you are having a PNG file, you actually having an alpha channel, which is like varying from zero to one. Um, but if you're using a JPEG or the regular image, uh, you, you can end up with having no um, alpha values. So in this case, in this article, we're uh, simply thinking that each pixel, right? If, if you have an image, right, you will have some different values for the pixels. You think about this for, let, let's see, this simple image is only containing like a red element. So the red element probably like changing from zero to uh, 255. Um, and let's just assume it's as simple as that. So basically when it comes to blur an image, it's, it's all about calculation. You're passing in a, a, a form of data and it can be, um, it's, it's very easy to think of you have a two-dimensional image right? you have rows and then you have columns and then it's naturally that each zero 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 one one zero one two here is a single value of that pixel so blurring an image is just right as simple as you have a different matrix and then you multiply these two values and eventually get a final value here and then this is new pixel value uh, like a combination of every single value of the each pixel will be the new presentation and then with this matrix multiplied by this matrix you will be having a final matrix uh, a matrix of like pixel values and then this image will be the blurred ones which is like quite simple so this article gave us um, yeah, I, I do mention 1D and 2D. The reason uh, I, I'm saying like it's very easy to think of 2D images because it in our mind we're having like rows and column concept, but to the image it's really much easier to think it's 1D. It's just like one times six for the first row, and then seven is actually the second row, so that the whole image can have a metadata. That in, in indicates that the width and height is is how many for the image and the rest you just use a single indexing system so when it comes to that it's called like 1d uh, one dimensional way to calculation and then when we tackle the math we can think of it 2d so yeah so basically um, when you have a so if I ch if we check the equation here the left side of the equation is actually the mask, which is matching um, the green square here in, in this picture. And then on the right side of, of the matrix uh, of, of the equation is a matrix of a real value. So that means we have, for example, we have an image of just nine pixels, right? And then we apply this mask on the left side. This is what we're gonna get as the final image for the central, um, like the, the pixel value for the central pixel. So with that being said, the left side, it, we call that, um, this article said, 
we call we call this identity kernel. That means this identity kernel, when you apply to every pixel, uh, it's exactly spitting out the same pixel result because you know it's zero. It's, so the calculation here is like one multiplied 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, and then all the rest like zero zero point zero is zero. Uh, 0 0.05 is 0, 0, 0 0.0 is 0. So all the rest, you know, around it are 0. And uh, so this final value is 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5 times 1. And then plus, you know, all the rest are 0. So basically, that's how you get this value. Um, yeah, and then this article also gave you index, you know, a little bit different kernel. Uh, and it indeed mentioned that, oh, if we're seeing a mask um, that is like one, uh, the sum of the mask, if it's equal to one, that's pretty much means we have a normalized um, mask. So that if we do the same calculation, the center is 0 0.5 times, you know, this guy and then the rest, you, you multiply every element you and then you, you put them together, you're gonna get like 0 0.2775 something. But basically this is the same calculation that we have here as well as in this picture. Basically this like green picture is that zero times one is zero and then four is all the rest are zero except for this bottom right corner is negative four times two, which is negative eight. That means, you know, the final value is negative eight. Okay, so with all that being said, um, this article also tells us very clearly so that if, you know, this, the left side, the sum of all the values are, uh, if it's greater than one, that means the result image is brighter than the source, meaning you, if, if you have regular image, uh, you can blend in more white into it um, so that, you know, the, the blurred image can be not only blurred but also brighter blurred and then if the sum is less than one the result is darker and if it's exactly one we assume the brightness of the blur shouldn't change much yeah so with i think these are very clear that you know we have some sort of like square uh, way of filtering image so that you know each value is 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 uh, mapping with each value there, um, but as you as we scroll down a little bit faster, um, then we can pr probably tell um, square image kind of brings in more a distorted feeling. So that you know the the better way of uh, applying this uh, uh, filter is more like a tent filter. Which is having a you know circle-ish mask, and which is exactly uh, if we scroll up a little bit, which is exactly this guy is doing. So you see, the the value of this center uh, center filter is is really big, and as it you know progress to to its edges, the value uh, kind of drops down. And and if you confuse a little bit of the higher value here. Uh, you shouldn't because you know the the API this article gonna use is sort of this image convolution ARGB88, and then you probably shouldn't care. And you also see uh, this API also actually passing in the whole you know this divisor is basically needed to sum all the values together and then pass in so that basically when we have this kernel 2D thing eventually it's going to be normalized. So each value will be divided by the total value, which is the divisor internally uh, of this function. So I would say this kernel, uh, this 2D kernel is pretty much, you know, something like this while it's having a circle mask so that, you know, the result is, is very smooth. Um, and, you know, with all this being said, it's quite interesting that if we go back to the uh, the Gaussian blur article, it's so obvious that um, the Gaussian blur is basically the same thing that we have a mathematical equation here. 
right it's sort of complicated but we as we you know scroll down a little bit scroll down a little, little bit it's all about coming to this sample Gaussian matrix so that it's having exactly the same idea that you know the center value is a little bit higher and then as it progress to the to its edges up down left and right it's exactly dropping values so that after probably four numbers it's it's neglectable so that you only cap this four matrix and at the end of the day it's just a pixel uh, or value um, calculation right they just apply this value with original rgb and then it's pretty much done yeah so basically that's the foundation of the blurred image but in ios it's not even like a little bit as complicated as this it's really simple so yeah okay so let's create the project and uh, let's just call it test blur ios uh let's actually skip uh swift ui so that it's more like traditional way of doing the demo and then no let's just create the project no author information was found yeah whatever some version control new tool uh let's also simply drag my little uh image prepared to the to my my nice little face into this uh, image and let's create the image set and then let's just simply drag it here and let's just call it my face and camel case okay so once we have this set we get back to the view controller and then uh, we can you know easily drag and drop a uh, so I, I hit command shift and l and then we can find image okay and then and then let's you know we can do two of them right after we find this we can find a blur or a visual effect view with blur that's pretty handy and then we're gonna copy and paste another one okay so if we drag a little bit down this side uh, we can actually click this right we can choose regular and then you can also choose uh dark or uh, you know let's just do this and then let's make the image view to be showing our uh, my face right and then this is my face okay so let's run the project um so that this basically this preview is very uh, clear enough to show everything but i still want to show the result in the simulator to to be you know exact the i would say the only downside of this approach is that you don't have much control to this uh, other than you know these four options because if you choose like actual light it's it's almost cannot see anything so that's the first way that i want to, to show you guys which is you know iOS itself is taking good care of us and as you can imagine that you know through this article you can definitely guess that the total value of the first one you know the mask will be more than one for for the actual light case for sure and then you, you we sort of blend in you know the darkness of it so I assume the mask of the second case is much smaller right? but that that's that's one way to do it and I think we can do it, you know, in a different way. Okay, so let's quickly uh, drag my blurred image view here. Let's call it image uh, is equal to UI image name my face. Right. So this is a this is our UI image. 
we're gonna assume this image must be existing create private function we're gonna call it blur image we're gonna pass in our image then we're gonna spit out another UI image so first let's import core image I'm gonna copy and paste some code Okay, so I just copy and paste some code and it's, so first, as you realize that I create a context. So, so basically this context is we have to sort of hold the reference to let it process anything here. So I kind of make a local variable under this class. During the process, we, we're gonna use the Gaussian blur, which is exactly what I mentioned here is, you know, kind of having this sort of circle-ish, um, filter effect we also use another feature called prop filter it's on stack overflow and i will attach the original link to you know to the video description and shout out to whoever made this code available for us to use and after all this we call this um, prop image to be the process image and it's being you know returned to the caller yeah there's only one thing that this process is definitely taking time because it's using a filter and it's running on the GPU. So, so let's first grab a background queue and then once everything is ready, we're gonna dispatch it to the main thread. Okay, so we just call dispatch queue.global.async and then, so yeah, so now we have the result of the, you know, the second way of generating the blur image. Uh, I think it's gonna be easier that we, if we pull back, you know, um, the first way that we put it blurred, image view here. Um, yeah, so let's do some side by side comparison. Yeah, so basically, this is the result that we have for both of the cases. The first one is that definitely that we applied our native uh, blur form, but the, you know, it's kind of a little bit overly blurred so but for the second one we do have some freedom to control how it blurred see if we change the value for the radius right and then we rerun the project it's much less blurred and it's pretty under control as well uh, and if we just to take like two pixels or two for the radius key it's it's almost like not blurred so we have a lot of freedom yeah so that's kind of the, the advantage of the second way of doing it the only downside of the second way of doing it is just the dispatch queue you know it's not as easy um, but i think the only reason that ios can do it so fast and it's all synchronous call for the first case even you write the code you just need to um, put a blurred effect view on top of your image view is that it kind of overly blurred it so that you know it kind of having a better performance and kind of sacrifice the quality of the image uh, i think that's the case um, but here here it is here you go these are the two ways that i want to share today and most importantly uh, i think you guys have the background knowledge of how uh, the basic of the foundation of the image process is uh, and i hope you enjoy it and learn thing or two from the video and I will see you next time.